Well, now our original series, Project Home. Uh, all around the region, people are building what are known as in-law units or granny flats to help with the housing crunch. And new state laws make them easier than ever to build. Tonight, Susie Steimel shows us a growing problem. Small landlords who already own those units but are struggling to legalize them. If the walls of this Potrero Hill Victorian could talk, they'd have quite the housing crisis quandary to share. We kind of liked that it was a little bit of a funky layout. It kind of added some charm to it. We just have a space that can r really feel like ours and, and like a home. This is what affordable housing should look like in San Francisco. It's a beautiful home in a nice neighborhood. The rent is below market rate. The tenants and landlord all actually like each other. And everyone wants to stay put. But because of conflicting city laws, this is all about to come apart. It's a total catch-22. Eric Terreri is a small landlord in San Francisco. This is his only rental property. Upstairs in a two-bedroom are two couples, including Brittany and Frank. Downstairs in a studio are Matt, his girlfriend, and their dog, Banksy, who crashed the interview a couple of times. Matt's apartment is the apparent problem. I was pretty shocked when we heard why uh, it was considered uh, an illegal unit. The ceiling is off by a couple of inches. So are the floorboards, and groundwater access isn't ideal, all of which make this unit technically illegal, something they only found out about after a neighbor complained. They could continue to, f to fine me, I think it's $250 or $350 a day, for not legalizing it. To legalize the unit, Eric would have to tear up the sidewalk out front, which would cost at least $50,000. And the excavation work needed to raise the ceilings would cost more than $200,000. It's work tenants don't think needs to be done that Eric can't afford to do. It's extremely frustrating for someone who doesn't have deep pockets like me. His other option is to take the unit off the market and displace all six tenants. It's a very scary situation. And my hope is that uh, the city uh, finds ways uh, to help make it easier uh, to make any uh, accessory dwelling unit uh, be permitted to be legal. Two conflicting San Francisco laws are at play here. The first is David Chu's ordinance from 2014 when he was a supervisor. That ordinance allows landlords to bring illegal in-law units onto the market without a permit. A second law that passed in 2016 makes it difficult for landlords to remove any unit, legal or not, from the market. So Eric would have to be granted a hearing by the Planning Commission to remove the illegal unit, which is something he's been waiting two years for. Dealing with the Planning Commission uh, and the Planning Department at this point in San Francisco's history is sort of like playing Russian roulette. It's incredibly difficult to be a small property owner in San Francisco. Daniel Bornstein is an attorney who regularly represents small landlords. He says he regularly hears stories of mom and pops being confused and then deciding renting here isn't worth the hassle. How many small property owners have you seen choose to leave the market because of so many complications like this? Oh, I would say dozens, dozens. And are we at risk of losing more? I would say yes. As Bornstein points out, Eric is taking a legal risk either way. If he continues to rent an illegal unit, his tenants could sue him. So the safest legal option would be to displace tenants even though he doesn't want to do that? Uh, well, you're between a rock and a hard place. So what's a small landlord with happy tenants in a city experiencing a housing crisis to do? It's a house of cards, and whether it falls hinges on Eric's decision to break the law or find a way around it. What I would say to the Planning Commission is if you really care about the housing crisis and providing affordable housing to the citizens and residents of San Francisco, help me legalize this unit. So at last check, Eric says he did just hear from the Planning Commission and right now it looks like the only option is to remove the unit and a hearing for that is set for April 2nd. You know, we, we keep hearing about, and we've done this story a million times, about counties and cities mm -hmm. supposedly making it easier right. for landlords to, to make these units and bring them online, but this flies in the face of that. It sure does, and he really wants to keep these tenants in place. Everybody's yeah. happy with the situation. It looks like there should be a better option, but right now, 
there isn't. And it seems like it'd be so much easier for the city that's facing pressure to have more affordable housing. This is already existing. Make it easy. Then you don't have to build yeah. anything. And they keep talking about how we need to keep people in place and right. this would do that. Yeah. All right. Well, keep sending your stories and your ideas to Project Home at CBS.com and see all of Susie's reporting on our website. Susie, thank you.